finally. Thank goodness. Yes. Thank goodness for this Friday. Got big weekend plans. Yeah. Really. Golf and T-ball. Yeah. That's about us. We spent all last weekend at the softball fields. Sounds fun. Like the well, most of them don't, so. But. Yeah. That's, that's fun. But, they are. We got them from a meeting we had uh, Saturday. We thought that everybody is getting that time, so. We actually had people request them. I didn't realize that. It was actually as common as it is to want something not to scratch. So they come in handy for sure, and they're at a really good price. Or our truck can give them at a really good price. <laughs> but we also, I don't know where Michael put it. We got this new light in right here. That's what I wanted to show. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I should have had it already open. All right. So I'm guessing he ordered this one because I don't remember seeing it. All right. Fun part about this one is it has a clip. You can clip it to your belt. Okay. If y'all wear belts. I don't. But it has a base. It's rechargeable and it can charge your phone. Wherever it went. Yeah. So this is the base that it charges on. And it has three different settings, 550 lumens. How's it charge your phone? Oh, right there. A, yep. Oh, it's a bat, like a battery pack. Exactly. And it also has the light here and here, and it has the, well, I'm not going to cut it on because you got the camera oh, on, the but the, the UV yeah. light. And I guess that's coming in handy right now because everybody's wanting their AC worked on. Mm -hmm. so, so it just drops them in. Yep. Oh, it's pretty neat. I thought it'd come in handy. But it's got, you know, you click How it different. Bright is it? 550 lumens on the first setting. The second setting, I think, is half that. Yeah. Well, it's got four. You have 550, 50, and 150. And at 550, you can last three, about three hours on full. Yeah. Yep. It's a nice looking light. It is. And it has an option where you cut it on. You can actually dim it or make it brighter as needed because I mean some situations you don't need it as bright as it goes. That's true. That's really yes. cool. I thought so. But I know flashlights is a big thing right now. Absolutely. That and UV. You keep that. It's uh -uh. a little bit of color right there. Yep. That's our quarter inch air ratchet. Well, it's tiny. Yeah we actually sell quite a bit of those believe it or not. They, I guess it gets them in the right spots. That's a little bit of guy yeah. right there. Yeah, we have a guy at a tractor place who uses his all the time. I think he's got two right now. That way, if something happens to one, he has the other one as a backup. Swap it out. I'm like, okay. Well, if that was a battery powered one, that would be awesome. As little as it is, it would be. It'd come in handy. But. <laughs> well, we had to go pick. This box up, Michael and I sold one Monday. I was thinking I sold a bunch of them. Yeah. We sold the, he sold the blue one with a blue hutch on it. And the guy finally got it. Well, this one is taking the spot of our uh, Thunderstorm Gray and our red one. And he, he kind of talked himself into it, to be honest. But the perk about, you know, being able to sell somebody their first box is he was able to tell them, you know, this is about the price that you're going to pay for this size box and then, you know, stuff like that. But, <laughs> but anyways, so we sold it to him and then we went and picked that one up. Want to go ahead? I don't want to go. You go. Yeah, we. <laughs> yep. Hey, I'm, I'm for it. <laughs> so. One of the really good things about being able to sell him on the box, he did talk himself into it, but he's able to start his credit. He's able to build his credit. He did something that I don't think I've ever seen anybody do. 
I asked him a couple of times, hey, are you sure this is what you, because he come on a cart. I don't have a cart. It's hard to get a cart right now. Um, so I told him, I said, I'll order you one. It's going to be a little bit. Uh, and he, he went back to the box and I told him, I asked him a couple of times, are you sure this is what you want? You don't want to wait on a cart. And now I want this one. I said, you're, and I made the comment. I said, so your wife's not going to call me in an hour and say, hey, he's got to bring the box back. He said, hold on. And I mean, he stepped right off the truck and I could hear the conversation between, I hear his side of it. So you're sure I can get it? You're, you're sure it's okay? And I guess she gave him the green light because he, he come back up and he said, let's do the paperwork. So he wants to grow where he's at. And then in order to grow, he, he said he needed a place to put some tools. So he got into it for a good rate, gets to start his credit out and be able to build from there. So we should be unloading that. Um, that's our second purple cart. I had I had sold one and had another guy looking at it and this guy actually come up here and we made a deal so I got that one from another distributor so we can make that happen so that one's going to leave here in just a minute. Um, so everybody's getting a little bit of tool storage right now that's always good. I know she talked about the lights I think you talked about the sockets as well. That's, that's Those are pretty important for keeping your um, flames down on your wheels. Uh, especially, they're starting to do more powder coated wheels and everything. Those are really important. Um, something else that some of them actually picked up at the meeting, um, it's getting AC season. So if you're seeing a lot of, some dealerships are going to see a lot of the new Freon right away. Some of them's not. If you're one that's doing a mixture of both and you're looking at getting a machine, Maco does have one that does both. So. Um, some of your distributors may already have them. Some may have them on the way. Just ask about them. It was really, really well priced, I thought, for the way that it could do both. Of course, it's going to have a uh, alarm on it for um, contaminants and everything like that. But I figure AC season's here. Um, we've already hit 80 a couple times. Uh, we're in that weird stage. Well, we're in that weird stage where you're cutting the heater on first thing, and then you're cutting the AC on, and then by the end of the day, you're cutting the heater back on, so our cars don't know what, what to think, but it's coming, so. Did you, did you um, the hooks, those are always good. We've talked about them plenty of times. If you don't have those, that's something. We I've done my top five or 10 tools starting out. That's If I was gonna be in a, a quick lane that did brakes and stuff like that, that's something I'd want just because it stops brake line damage and everything, I mean, it can happen so quick and it can, and honestly, we've all probably had that caliper hanging up on the strut and it fall down and hit our hand and, and we had to really think about our life choices. So that would definitely be one of them as well. You know, we've said flashlights and everything else, but they're cheap, they're good. I've seen a bunch of homemade ones. Um, the only thing about the homemade ones is they can hurt you pretty quick too. <laughs> um, I had- well, I bought that set from you. I bought that set. It's just quicker, it's easier, um, and I actually used to use um, just a regular bungee cord like type deal, tie down, how, whatever you call it, um, and I stopped doing that the day that it broke. I went to put it on, and when I did, it broke, and it come back and slapped me in the face. I, I bought those the next week. That, uh, <laughs> that little bit of money that, that it took to buy those was well worth it after that. I mean, it's you know the right tool for the right job. So but we're right now we don't have um, because of the way it's kind of being slow stuff coming in. We don't have just new stuff constantly. So what we're doing is just filling in with the basics, the commons that's going to make your life easy. Um, you would be surprised at how many people's afraid to use those. They have every reason in the world why. They don't think it'll fit. Uh, it's going to slip. I'm going to tell you, I use it on this truck. Um, it does. It. I have not had that thing try to slip one time. I think the problem is, is that we've almost all bought a real cheap version of it. And and they they got. 
yeah they do have some of the ones with a flat side that work good i carry one also for the real small applications uh they work but the thing about it is you've got to get the right size but also the the makeup of where they go in there they cannot twist because that's where you're going to start getting that slippage is when these start to twist and bow back so if you bought a real cheap yeah if, if you've ever bought a cheap version of one of those you probably hate it but if you if you use that one out there that's my go-to the only thing i don't use those on is the you know plastic and metal caps for the ones that's up top or at the bottom but they they went to the cartilage filter on some of them i won't i won't pull that out there we all know that that that's not going to work but for any of the the actual metal oil filters and stuff like that i've seen people put screwdrivers through them i've, I've seen a little bit of everything those right there, I can't tell you how many times just on this truck, because it seems like they always tighten up as you drive. Yeah, um, the yeah. well. I serviced this truck uh, this last weekend, and uh, it, it's it's kind of funny because I cussed the guy that did it last, and it's always me. But it, you know, it just seems like it's like, how did it get this tight? You know, when I, I know when I worked at the dealership on them Corollas, and I hear it a lot. Um, they say, well, some, the last guy must use an impact, and it's like, nah. Them them Corollas and their plastic caps are so bad about getting super tight. And everybody, you know, well, what do you use on it? The longest ratchet I can find, and use the actual weight of the motor, because um, when you go to break it loose to push the motor back, use that. Use the motor swinging to your advantage. I know my dad and her and an, uh, another one of my family members called me one day and they were, this cap won't come off. I'm like, eh, I get it when I get home. Like we've tried everything. Which direction? It's like, I, I get it when I get home. So on on the plastic caps, it does worry you a little bit whether you're going to crack them or not. I think that's another reason. If you ever look at the actual torque specs, what is those? <laughs> but the actual torque specs on a lot of your oil filters are super super low for that fact of it's you know it, it's going to get tighter well i mean the the what i try to tell people is even the, the gasket it's that rubber try to rub your hand across that rubber without any oil on it you know we all take and we rub oil on it and nobody ever really told anybody why we did that except for the fact of hey a it keeps that gasket from being pulled off that's the main reason the reason that is is because it's super super it it helps tighten that right that that helps hold it tight the vibrations of the motor just make it tighter so i used to tell the guys um, that, that worked up there with us when you tighten that oil filter don't be using any type of tool use your hand most of them is run it till it stops in a quarter of a turn we're not trying to be superman but you know how that works but we do have, uh, we've got some of the Maco cordless coming in. It's coming in a little slow, but it is coming in. So if you're waiting on any of that, just ask your dealer. It, it, we're getting updates constantly. Uh, I don't know if everybody heard, but we're getting a new color cart. So that's supposed to be coming around too. Uh, trying to tell you all the fun and exciting stuff. I'm trying to remember back, it's been a long week. Uh, I know the AC machine. Other than that, uh, there is going to be some changes. Uh, I, I don't want to get this too, too far out in it because we just got the email, but there is some changes coming to our PSA that's, that's really going to help people. Uh, and they're going to, and I like it. I like the changes that's going to come. I'm not really going to tell them much about it because if it don't happen, something happens, I don't want to be the one that, that was wrong. But yeah, other than that, you use a lot of the brushes to clean, like when doing breaks and stuff. I used to, yeah. Yeah, used to. Yeah. Uh, I had a guy the other day ask me when they would ever use these, and I asked him if he ever did brakes. He said, all the time. I said, these right here are the best thing. If you're having to take a hammer or something to put that pin back in. I'm trying to use sandpaper or something, just quickly. I'm going to tell you what, uh, I had a guy that worked next to me that used to take sandpaper and put it, uh, he put a carter key uh, and wrap it around it. Boy, that would clean it so smooth and so quick. Um, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's 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 fun to actually sit back and watch the older techs that's been in it for a while make do, and some of the, some of the tips that they have, 
Man, it's crazy. I I, uh, I learned a lot from a couple of the guys that I worked with. You, get, you need a good air blower. Um, I used used to tell people all the time, air blower's worth its weight in gold, just don't blow your hand off with it. Um, nobody ever really knew what I was talking about until one of them actually put it up to him and blew it and created an air pocket in his hand. Boy, he was scared to death then. Probably wasn't the brightest to do that. But. I sent a guy a gift. Uh, it was a hydraulic line. that had a little bitty, tiny, tiny hole in it. And he rubbed his hand across it and injected that hydraulic fluid under his skin. Yeah, we... Uh, it's a dangerous stuff. I had a guy call me one time about a uh, diesel. He said, hey, you know, I got a diesel. Um, something was wrong with the, the fuel system. He was hearing a hissing. It's like, yeah, okay, well, uh, I'm gonna be there in a couple of shops. You know, I'll try to help you see what's going on. And he said, well, I got a kid that says he's a diesel tech. I just, I, you know, he hasn't really impressed me. I said, well, when we get there, I, I'll walk out with him and we'll see, you know, just what might be going on, which I already knew if it's making a hissing noise then it's probably got a leak. But we get out there and, and it's not got a little bit of hissing noise. It's, it's, I mean, it's loud, you can hear it. I mean, you see it dripping. And, uh, he, he crunked the truck up, was pissing to reach his hand in to pop the hood. I said, oh, let's not do that. Let's just wait. We don't know where that's spraying. Uh, well, what do you mean? That's high pressure. That's a, that's a lot. I don't, Especially when it's hissing. Yeah, let's, let's cut it off and let's do a visual inspection first. Um, I mean, it was, it was pretty good little, the line right where it screwed in, it, it had a pretty good leak. And, I told that guy, I said, you know, popping the hood it probably wouldn't have even mattered. But the way this guy just did not care and didn't even know what a high pressure fuel line even meant, I don't think he was a diesel tech. I mean, that's that's usually the first thing they stress. Well, I mean, even on your smaller cars, the, the, the ones that use the high pressure pump sitting right there on the valve cover, they tell you do not break those loose while it's running. I mean, it's definitely high and they're noisy i mean they they're definitely i know uh we've had to install on a few of the ones that i've worked on like a uh insulating material around it to try to keep the noise down it's kind of it's it's really interesting how much stuff the actual manufacturers do just to hide noises and make it feel normal i know on uh, a lot of your cbt vehicles when they first come out they were having to make it um and priuses and stuff was the same way that the throttle plate would close when it was supposedly fisting a shift uh and the reason for that was but so think that it was shifting yeah uh because when when those that actually don't shift first come out um it freaked people out they thought their transmission was messed up you know they're trying to feel the shift <laughs> Uh, it's crazy, you know, I'd, I'd rather not feel it, but not real sold on the CVT transmissions. Uh, I haven't really seen a good one in my opinion. Almost every one of them, the chain wears, and because there's no actual teeth on this rocket, if, I mean, you get a little bit of chain wear, it starts to slip. So, I'm sure somebody has a good opinion on CVTs. I just ain't a fan of them yet. That's kind of like full loader side by sides, you know, like a manual shift still the way to go. I actually learned how to drive uh, a motorcycle by riding a dirt bike because it's, I mean, it's, you're learning the clutch, learning, you know, five speed cars the same way, you're just using your foot, in my opinion. But uh, on a motorcycle, it's crazy how you have to get your hand coordinated with. All right, I'm gonna let go at the same time of twisting, right? You know, uh, you don't learn how to do that. There's a lot of jerking. I mean, that that jerk and die, jerk and die. It's. Well, you get it. You got it. It's it, like, how is this so complicated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and it's it's one of those things. Of course, they always say it's like riding a bicycle, right? You don't ever forget. When you first try to ride that bicycle without training wheels. It's hard, uh, but once you get it, it's enjoyable. And I, that's something I'll never forget. Was trying to learn how to do that actually wrecked the dirt bike because I got too comfortable too quick, but that is what it is, trying to race it. But Yeah, but it wasn't mine. <laughs> but, uh, 
the guy the guy had told my dad because my dad told him that he was trying to teach me how to ride and the guy said well here come get this dirt bike and let him let him on it you know he said, nah, I don't do that he said if he wrecks it it's fine about an hour into it I'm doing good and I'm gonna start trying to race like gotta learn to slow down around the curves the dirt I <laughs> I went to make a curve and then the dirt because I was in the grass obviously but the dirt gave way and I hit a root at the same time and it threw me off of it all it did was bust up some plastic boy I was nervous my dad wasn't very happy that he had to go tell his friend that it was messed up but the guy would the guy didn't care he said he'd rather me wrecked it than you know a motorcycle so I know unfortunately you got to learn the hard way on some stuff right all right guys Guys, have a great weekend. We like to be here.